What is up amigos? Today we're going through what the critical Mach number is and something called shock stall. So what is the critical Mach number? So let's say I have an object here, it can be a cylinder, and I have the flow going this way. And it's at a free stream velocity of u infinity. Now as the flow goes over this object and almost all curved surfaces, it will start to accelerate in velocity. So the velocity here at this station, let's say station one, is greater than the velocity at in the free stream uh, flow. So this is good because we can use it for some, for some purposes, such as creating lift, but there are certain conditions which make it bad. So this is where the critical maximum comes into it. If we have quite a high a fast moving flow, so let's say your infinity equals 0 0.9, then the flow here could actually start to reach sonic speeds. So it could be, the, the magnitude of the Mach number could be one. And this results in shock waves forming. So you have a shock here and a shock here, and depending on this surface's um, direction, um, angle, this changes the angle of the shock. And what this does is it results in the drag coefficient dramatically increasing along with these shock waves. So that is the critical Mach number, the point at which the flow over this object will start to reach a sonic flow. And if you have a very interesting object, for example, you might have two cylinders connected and then you might have a third object of like this shape, you might get a few different shocks forming here off of these things. And interestingly, with different object shapes, the amount of uh, acceleration that the flow experiences will be different. So the critical Mach number may not be 0 0.9. For this uh, object, for example, the critical Mach number might be 0 0.8. So for the entire system, the critical Mach number is 0 0.8. This is the point at which we first get sonic flow and shock waves forming over any part of the system of this object. And for airplanes, this is quite an important phenomenon. So this is what's called shock stall for the first reason. So let's say we have an, an airfoil, and this is on an airplane, it's negatively counted for some reason, I don't know, I just drew it like that. <laughs> so when we have the flow coming over this airfoil and it accelerates, we then get the critical Mach number and we get a shock forming. And this results in the drag increasing as we know because of wave drag, but also we get a couple other very negative effects. One is the lift coefficient drops and also the moment coefficient changes as well. So what this does is the entire airplane now all of a sudden is kind of, it's experiencing very similar conditions to stall. We have an increase in drag, a drop in lift and the moment changes. So now this potentially is going to be unstable. Un, um, so it might pitch this way, it might pitch this way. And the pilot all of a sudden has to do with this significant change in handling of this airplane. And this is what's termed shock stall. So it's technically not stall, but because it has very similar um, like effects to stall, we call it shock stall. And that is what the critical Mach number is. And this can occur for any object. It's just that this was pioneered for airplanes, but and it's very important for airplanes, but this can go for any object and including helicopters. Helicopters um, are actually limited by the critical Mach number, which is why, and drag divergence, which is why no helicopter can really break the sound barrier. It's mainly for this reason. So that is the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, click the subscribe button. And if you want to see more as well, check out this playlist here. So I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.